Today, Colby and I will discuss some over-unders for the 2024 Mariners coming up here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ahoy, sailors. It is Thursday, March 21st, 2024. This is Tidy Gonzalez and Colby Pattenhead for the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. Subscribe, like, and turn on alerts if you're watching on YouTube or subscribe and leave a five-star review on your preferred podcast platform if you like what you hear. And if you're part of the crew and rock with us every single day, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And if you want to hear from us even more, please consider signing up for our Patreon. You can now get a free seven-day trial to check out the show. The link, as well as our social accounts, is in the description of this episode. And today, Colby and I have some over-unders for one another. I believe Colby has six for me. I have eight for him. And we're going to get each other's thoughts on them. And you can participate as well down in the comments below. We're going to start here with one of mine. Mitch Garver, over under 99 and a half games played. He's played over 100 games once in his career. Do you think he's going to do it again, Coley? Mitch, please. Of course, he's going to get over. Uh, I'll take the over, uh, mostly because I think Seattle is going to severely limit how much he plays the field. Uh, Now, that doesn't guarantee that he won't get hurt. Uh, You know, guys who have a history of injuries tend to it tends to be easier for them to re-injure themselves uh particularly if it's soft tissue things like that but uh you know garber if he's not going to catch much obviously the odds are significantly better that he's able to stay healthy so uh 100 feels like a, a really good uh number i i think the mariners even if he's 100 percent healthy and he doesn't need you know an il stand at any point this year i think they'd probably like to tap him out though at about one 120 125 uh just to make sure that they have him when they need him um and there's also going to be days where you just want to get dom canzone some at bats you like that you like the matchup better so um i don't think he's going to do you know 140 i I don't think it's it's going to be like he's an everyday player but he's going to play a ton i i think i i think you know i'd probably say that 120 ish is, is about where i think he's going to get to um but yeah i think his odds of staying healthier now that he's basically a full-time dh are much better. So I, I think we're going to get, you know, hundred plus games out of uh, Garver this year. And so far so good. No, no reports of any kind of, you know, wrist soreness or, you know, hamstring pull, nothing like that's happened in spring so far. Um, I don't think, has he appeared in the game in a game yet as a position player? I think he may be caught so. a couple innings, but either way, it's, it's been very, very limited. They're being very, let us know if we're wrong down in the comments yeah. below you guys love to do oh, that anyway, I'm, so. I'm sure you will yeah. you don't yeah. get a lot of opportunities when i speak when ty you know just ugh. sure but uh, <laughs> uh i'll take the over yeah I, i'll take the over as well on that one all right what do you got for me all right ty for this one we're going to your namesake oh, mr okay. ty france although he is a phony he is a tyler uh mm-hmm. but ty france over under 17 and a half home runs his career high is 20 uh, last mm-hmm. year he tapped out at i believe nine so 12 what do you I think believe. 11 uh well either way not good yeah yeah not good not good especially from your first baseman uh yeah. you don't want your first baseman hitting 12 home runs uh even 18 is not great uh like he did in what 2022 um so yeah so but he's he's gone take it wouldn't you yeah yeah you take absolutely. his 2022 season if he gave yeah. it to you so He's gone over 17 and a half twice. Obviously, really? he's put the work in this this offseason, trying to get back to that to being that guy and has even talked about being even more than that, right? Um, like we talked about on yesterday's episode, I just want Ty to get back to putting the ball in play very often and finding grass very often. Um, I don't really want him chasing after power. I, and I think the, the power will will naturally come a little bit. And We've heard from Tanner Stokey, uh, the director of hitting over at, at Driveline, talking to Ben Ranieri on the Sea level podcast, that they've worked on Ty pulling the ball more uh, and lifting the ball more to his pull side. So I do think that will lead to more home runs. I still think that he will fall short of that mark, though. So I'll take the under, but I'll, it'll be a slight under. I think he gets like 15, 16. Yeah. I really hate hearing that from the guys at driveline that he's going to try and get to more power. And it's like, yeah, that's literally what happened last year. Uh, So, you know, if you look at some of the projection system, which I know people love uh, steamer has him at 17 zips has him at 15 
most of them have them be at 15, 16 or 17. So, no. um, I think, uh, I think, I think I'll take the over barely, okay. but I think it might be a little detrimental to Ty's overall game, uh, that he's chasing pull side power a little bit. If he can get there naturally fine, but I, I, I am concerned that, uh, you know, Ty France is, is trying to reinvent himself when he was already a really good player. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what he can do, but uh, I'll, I'll take the over, but I think it's going to be like 18, 19. I don't think he's getting to like 25, 26. Yeah. So I'm going Hope slide over. Wrong. You're going slide over. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's stick with Ty France here. Over under 29 and a half hit by pitches for Ty France. He had 34 last year. I know he's, he's talked about how he's backed off the plate a little bit um and how he's just like a little more agile but Mm. come on he's not getting out of the way um i'll take the over uh here uh but uh i think it's a a good number um you know i think i probably like 31 and a half i'd probably take the under so Mm. uh, i'll take the over and and you know part of you is like okay well hopefully he gets hit by fewer pitches but then again his on base percentage is pretty heavily you know weighed by the number of times he gets hit by a pitch so can he just get hit like 30 times but like in the backside or right. like you know off it i mean I, off his like the off his booty part. yeah like like no nothing in the head the wrist the yeah, you yeah. know the knee the ankle but anything like in between those areas sure or the foot like sure. but uh yeah i i think it'll be over uh, I, I don't think Ty is quite agile enough to get out of the way. And I don't want him to like one of the strengths he has is that he's able to cover that outside corner really well because he kind of dives out over the plate. So um, I know he's, he's taken, you know, he's further back from the plate and all that stuff, but uh, I still think he's going to, you know, lean out over the plate a little bit, try and get to that outside corner more uh, like he did in 21 and 22, hopefully. Uh, so I'll take the over. Yeah, I'll take the over as well. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if he shattered his career high of 34 last year because he's just a magnet for that. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, all right. What do you got for me? Um, let's go Haniger, Mitch Haniger. Big swing mm-hmm. player, kind of, if you want to count on him at all. He's a swing player. Um, I don't know if I'm counting on him with this number or not, but uh, 299 and a half plate appearances for Mitch Haniger. What do you all think? All right. So it relies a lot upon him staying healthy, of course. Um, mm-hmm. I I really want him to stay healthy, obviously. Like I, I, he's obviously swinging the bat amazing right now, and if he can carry that over into the regular season at least a little bit, uh, that's a very valuable hitter to have in your lineup, uh, especially as someone that isn't really going to be an everyday player for you, nor should he, because you want to try and manage you know, his health as much as he possibly can. It's going to be hard to do that because Mitch Garver is the DH, right? So you're going to have to play Haniger in the field and that just exposes them a little bit more naturally to, you know, some, some possible injuries, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't trust that he's going to stay healthy though. His body will betray him. I don't even know if it's his body that will betray him yeah, because most of luck. the injuries have been freak accidents, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I just feel like something is going to happen because it just seems like it always happens. I hope that I'm wrong. I really hope that I'm wrong, but I'm going to take the under because I just, I, it's almost every year that it's happened to him. Right. Unfortunately. Now, to be fair, Hanager for him to get to 300 plate appearances and, and, you know, hit on this over, it's only about 70 to 80 games of, yeah. you know, of full-time starts. Like oh, you got to get four at bats or so a yep. game. And some games he'll get five, some games he'll get two. So it's only about 80 games played. Um, so the Mariners, you know, they they probably know how to how to manage Mitch better than anybody uh, in the game. Uh, but there's just some things you can't overcome. So 299 and a half, uh, I'm on the fence. Uh, I would probably say, I think he might get to 350 this year. Like, mm-hmm. so I, I guess over, but like this, it's never, ever bet on the number of games Mitch Haniger plays. That is my professional advice to you. So we are going to do some more over unders here in just a moment. But first a reminder, this episode of the Locked On Mariners podcast is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV and FanDuel. 
Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as a Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV as soon as possible. Fire TV also recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports from March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots of more not to mention great news entertainment gaming travel and cooking videos as well check out fire tv channels on fire tv and alexa devices and if you haven't checked out fire tv channels you should trust me on this to learn more visit amazon.com slash locked on fire tv say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed it's time to go dancing on america's number one sports book Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on, that's L-O-C-K-D-O-N, and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. You're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you again for making us your first listen. And just a reminder that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. We are doing over-unders. For the 2024 Mariners. That was definitely the first time that I did that read. We are doing over unders for the 2024 Mariners. We've gone over a few of them. Let's get back into them. Uh, I got a couple here for you, Colby. Let's go with this one. Dominic Canzone over under two and a half F4. Boy, I sure hope it's over because that would be sweeter and more savory than a nice pulled mm. pork sandwich with a side of mac and cheese and cornbread. Mm. uh but we might have been talking about barbecue in between segments oh it looks so good it looks so um good. Yeah. and we don't have any good barbecue places here in town it really bums me out uh dom can zone over under two and a half uh i'm gonna go under uh i think it's close i uh, i know he's not gonna give me anything defensively uh to go towards his war total not gonna give me a ton on the bases either although he is fast so He does have the potential to be an above average base runner, but we saw some things last year about how he cut the bases that, uh, you know, cost a couple guys some RBIs. They weren't too thrilled about it. So, uh, yeah, hopefully he's improved there, but this pretty much has to be all on the bat. And uh, also war is is a cumulative stat. How many at bats does he need to get to two and a half wins? I think he probably needs 500, 600. I don't know if he's going to get there. So, uh, for him to get to two and a half wins, like as just a pure bat, uh, and not even that, his defense probably drags down the war a little bit. Uh, he's going to have to do pretty much what Garver did last year, which is what 280, 370, 500. Like yeah. it, it's got to be think, really good. I think if you're taking the over here, you're basically betting that he is going to get more opportunities because he's good, right? He's that yes. good. Uh, so. I'm not too concerned about the plate appearances. Again, if you are taking the over, um, I think it's a little aggressive. I think two wins is, is a more fair prediction for Canzone, which is still an everyday player by Fangraph standards. Yeah. Um, so I, I think he gets around there. Just I don't know about two and a half, like pushing three. I, I don't know if he's going to be pushing three this year. But hey, if he is, then that's really good news for the Mariners. Mm-hmm. So, got another one here for you. Brian Wu, over under 24 and a half starts. I'll take the over. Um, I, I think they're going to have to skip him a couple times. They're probably going to have to, you know, short script him a couple times. Um, but I, I don't think he's going to get hurt. Like, I, I know he's got the Tommy John in his in his past, but uh, the delivery is so smooth and effortless that there's not there's just not effort. So, you know, 
It, it's not like every single pitch you feel like he's in danger of throwing his arm out. It, I, I think he'll be fine. Um, obviously, this assumes that he's going to perform as well, but he only has to perform a little bit to get there because the Mariners don't have like the the guy nipping at the heels uh, of these. Whereas last year they had Miller and Wu nipping at the heels of Marco and, and Flexen. Uh, this year they don't. You know, Emerson Hancock is nothing like. Reed Van Scoter, like that's the guy you're going to, uh, I mean, no offense to Van Scoter, but I'm not sure if he's big league ready. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's just, just not a lot here. So unless they go and they make a move early, Wu from just being kind of an average pitcher is going to get 22, 23 starts before the deadline anyways. So um, I'll take the over here. Uh, I think he's going to be healthy. Uh, I think he'll perform enough that they won't have to make a, a move. And I, I don't think he's going to get skipped. This would be what about 10 times, 11 times. I don't think he's going to get skipped that much. So uh, I'll take the over. I, I believe we will stay healthy and I believe he'll perform well enough to not get basically demoted by may, which is, I think the only way he hits this under uh, without, you know, succumbing to injury. All right. So what do you got for me? Uh, Let's go to a guy we haven't talked a lot about the last few days because what is what is there to say? Let's talk about Julio Rodriguez, uh, who is as smooth as North Carolina barbecue sauce. 33 and a half steals over under for Julio. Uh, that's my number. Um, you know, uh-huh. I wanted to – I feel like this is a pretty good spot uh, because uh-huh. at some point the Mariners are going to ask Julio to stop running, uh, much like the Angels did with Mike Trout. So is that this year? Probably not, uh, but I think that day is coming, and, and I think Julio is going to be, you know, smarter and pick his spots, uh, particularly with the new offense behind him. So, uh, what do you think? Thirty-three and a half over or under. I'm going to take the over. Interesting. And we talked about it with the uh, with the MVP discussion. What was it last week? Mm-hmm. That Julio is going to win the MVP this year, and I think he is going to have a very good shot at doing that this year. He's going to have to do something special, like potentially going 30, 40, 30 homers, 40 stolen bases, or even 40, 40, 40, 40. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think he's going to push for that, especially in the stolen base department, because I, I think he's just going to get on base more this year than he did last year and have more opportunities. And he already stole what? 32 last year, I think 37, 37. Wow. I was way off. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think he's going to clear that. I think he's going to get to 40. Yeah. Uh, you look at the projection systems this year. Steamer has him at 32. Zipsum has him at 34. Uh, the fan graphs, whatever, FGDC has him at 33. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. seems to be the number that a lot of projection systems have him at. Um, I think I'd take the over, uh, but I do think that there will be times where the Mariners have to literally be like, hey, Julio, stop. Uh, but it also will be interesting to see with the new obstruction rules at second base, like hmm. are the teams more grass, bigger bases, obviously, and the disengagement yep. rules. And now the, you know, the fielder can't block the bag, uh, you know, so I, I do wonder maybe teams are even more aggressive with the stolen bases. So uh, I think I'll take the over. Um, Julio might have a 50 stolen base season in him at some point. It's just a matter of whether or not, he can get to it before the Mariners and him kind of come to a mutual decision that like your bat is too valuable to risk, you know, trying to steal 40 bags a year. Um, Mm -hmm. Unfortunately that, uh, that conversation comes for just about every player uh, with the kind of power that uh, Julio shows. So I don't think that's this year though. So I'll take the over. All right. What else you got for me? Uh, George Kirby. I know. Spoiler alert, Ty is almost certainly taking him to win the Cy Young next year and our next uh week in our see in our you know big picture preview. Mm-hmm. Uh but uh George Kirby uh obviously took some steps forward last year, uh in some ways took some steps back from his rookie year. Uh one of them was in the strikeout department. Uh doesn't miss as many bats as you would like for a guy who could be an ace. So I'm wondering this year, uh, does he miss a few more bats? Does he get a K per nine? of greater than nine K per nine. Yes. In order for him to win the Cy Young, he's probably going to have to clear a K per inning. And I think he'll do that. Yeah. Last year, 8.12 K per nine, his rookie year, 9.21. We know that this spring he's worked on trying to induce more swings and misses uh, by, you know, pitching more outside the zone. 
part of the reason why his numbers aren't great, but also George Kirby's never been very good in spring training and it literally has never mattered once. So uh, I think he's going to probably come in in the high eights. Uh, I just, I don't see a, a pitch that he can regularly get swings and misses with aside from the fastball. And typically guys who are, you know, fastball is their swing and miss pitch. They tend to not be at nine. They tend to be in the eights, the high eights. So uh, we'll see. Uh, certainly could, uh, wouldn't be that surprised if he, if he did it. I mean, pretty much nothing George Kirby could do on the mound would surprise me anymore. But uh, yeah, I think, I think you're probably going to see high eights K per nine. And then probably, I mean, almost certainly a sub two based on ball per nine, but maybe even a sub like 1.5 based on ball per nine. You could also strike out a lot of dudes by just dotting up the corners, and freezing them. You can, but it's hard to strike out dudes if they won't let you get to a two strike count because they're so aggressive early in the count. Good point. That's a good point. Got some more over-unders for you coming up here in just a moment. But first, a reminder, this episode of the Locked On Mariners podcast is brought to you by Prize Picks. Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court, there is no shortage of high-stakes basketball moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. Conference tournaments are here, which means the biggest moments in college basketball are getting closer. Be a part of the action on prize picks for both men's and women's college basketball. And tonight in the pros, I'm taking Corey Kispert less than 14 and a half points against the Kings and Dylan Brooks more than 11 and a half points against the Bulls. Download the app today and use the promo code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. That is promo code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you again for making us your first listen as we go over some over-unders for the 2024 Mariners. So now we're at the part of the show where we're just going to focus on the Mariners. We're going to focus on big picture over-unders. So I'm going to start here with uh, over-under 15 and a half wins before May. They're playing 30 games before the month of May. So are they going to finish over 500, basically? God, I hate this over-under so much. So stupid. I couldn't care less. Um, They've been talking about it, wanting to have a better start to the season. Yeah, because if they go 14 and 16, it's over. Right. As opposed to if they go 16 and 14, they're winning the World Series. Huge swing. Listen, just tell us, are they going to go over 500 or not before the month of May? You know what? They're going to go 15 and 15 just to spite you. Okay, cool. Great. <laughs> so technically under. All right. All right. Which one do you, or what do you have for me? Oh, good. We're done with that one. Sure. Oh, God. Um, so let's go. Let's let's talk about the the midsummer classic, which unfortunately will not be back in Seattle. Last year, the Mariners had three All Stars uh, up here in in you know the last game of T Mobile Park in in their entire careers. Uh, kind of a disappointing number considering. But uh, my question to you is: Do they have more All Stars this year? So three and a half All Stars for the Seattle Mariners this year, over under. Mm. I noticed my banner hasn't been put up. Interesting. Oh, let's let's do that. Interesting. That Mine is not worthy of the banner. All right. Let, let's let's throw it up there. It's it's up now. It's up now. Does that appease you, comrade no. Colby? No, it doesn't. Hmm. No, I, I will don't not really ignore the plight of the working man, it's which true. is me. You will not. That's right. That is you. Also me. All right. So all star selections. Uh, three and a half all star selections. So they had. They had three last year um, after, you know, some guys got hurt or whatever. Um, I'm going to take the under. I'll say I'll say three. I'll say three. again. Yeah. I'll, I'll say. Do you, do you want me to just like pick the guys? Sure. Why not? Three. All right. Julio. Duh. Right. Obviously. George Kirby. Duh. Okay. And then uh, they run it back with the same crew last year. Cal Raleigh. Let me tell you, you're wrong. It's an right. over. And the correct answer is nine. No. Whoa. The correct answer is six. Actually, that, that would be a fun get back with the Rangers because the Rangers had so many all-stars last yeah. year in Seattle. Now it's being played in Arlington. Like I have like six or seven all-stars down in Texas. I'll take mm -hmm. I'll take the under because you know what? East Coast bias, folks. I'm pulling there that card go. out. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> the answer is six. Julio, All right. Luis. All right. George, all right, Logan, oh, Cal, yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, Mitch Garver is the DH. 
another win one over under 34 and a half wins versus AL West teams this year. They had 33 this past year. Well, they're getting 12 against Oakland. That's a lock. Lock that yeah. in. They were think what, they... 11 and one against the A's. Or did they go uh, undefeated? 12 and one, I think last year. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. the year before they were like, what was it? It was the last year they played 19, right? And they were like 17 mm-hmm. and two. Like just insane success against the A's. And I know people are like, it's the A's. It doesn't matter. Well, I'll tell that to the Houston Astros and the Texas Rangers who are like barely above 500 against the A's. Uh, those ones count. So uh, what they have last year, 33? Yeah. I'm going to go. So they play 48 games or 52. That right? 52. That's right. Uh, 13 games, right? Each. Mm-hmm. I think the angels are going to be a pain. They always are for the Mariners anyways, regardless of Uh the team, but that bullpen, it's got some dudes and obviously, you know, we'll see who the next David Fletcher, Max Stassi is. It's going to be Evan White. It, yeah. I mean, fine, whatever. Uh, I will take the, what'd you say? 33 and a half. I don't know. There's no, there's no banner up. Um, It was up. I'll take the under. But I think it's going to be more balanced. I think they'll drop a couple more against like Oakland, but then they'll mm-hmm. win a couple more against like Texas. Gotcha. Uh, so I, I I think it's going to be under, but it, it's going to be it's going to feel like they're playing better against the division because they're not going to get run out of the building every time they play the Texas Rangers. All right, so we're down to our last two. You want to do yours? I feel like I, we should save mine for the the grand finale because it's kind of like the all encompassing number that is the okay. only one people care about. All right. Now, the big one here for me. Sure. Over under 0.5 brawls. So are they going to get in a brawl or not? Now, what defines a brawl? Punches. Is it just thrown. any bench? Oh, punches? Okay. So like yeah, the benches yeah. can clear and they could like shout at each other. Yeah. Like, no, is no, no. a push we're talking, like a punch? We're, we're talking We're talking like angels, mariners, like actual oh. fisticuffs. So not, not anything that the mariners and Astros have done. That no, None of that no. is a brawl. No, like just actual that. hands being thrown. I'll take the under. You suck. You're boring. Well, Jose Caballero's gone. Like, who's so, the number? Who's the person most like likely to instigate a brawl on this team? Brawl almost exclusively feels like a divisional thing, right? Like, you're not going to get into a brawl with like the Orioles. So, like, never know. They, gonna, they might mean, start maybe. chirping at you. I mean, maybe it, we know that the Mariners. We, one thing uh, we know is that the Mariners are at fault for all the dust ups because they just keep on hitting other players, even right, though they're the most hit team right, in the league, right. and they hit the fewest batters in the league. But it's still the Mariners' fault. Mm-hmm. Scott Service. Yeah, I guess he just wasn't raised right. Um, right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'll take the under still. I think they're going to finally throw hands with the Astros this year. I know that's weird because like Maldonado's gone, Caballero's gone, like all these guys that have like started stuff with one another. And like it seems like it's gotten close. Maybe Stanek is the instigator there. Goes a little Maybe. too, you know, high and tight against like Altuve or something like that. And yeah, yep. yeah we'll see. We'll see. I yep. just, I don't think that they're actively looking to brawl very clearly. No. Um, so yeah, they don't start well, anything. They, but they disciplined too. They've they've yes. been very disciplined when it comes to that because there there have been moments I, where they could easily fight sure. another team. I guess their parents raised them right. Double callback. Yep, bring back Plasic. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm taking the over. Uh, I, I I think I think they're gonna I think they're gonna throw hands. Somewhere. Just one, right? And I think it's and I think it's gonna be the Astros. Yeah, just just one, just one as a treat. Okay, and okay. preferably like earlier in the season. And hopefully no one gets know. hurt. I don't know if I want anybody throwing punches. But, you know, as long as no one gets hurt, I'm all for it. Yeah, last time this happened, somebody broke their arm. It wasn't, wasn't a mariner, mariner, so we didn't care. So, but like, still, <laughs> wasn't a mariner, so out of sight, out of mind. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. So last over under, probably the big one, the one that easily carries the most significance. Hi. The Mariners have been stuck in this like 88 to 90 win window for the last three years. Ah, yes. I feel like I've heard something about that. A certain percentage. So, Ty, my question to you is over under 54% win percent. No. (laughs) Over under 90.5 wins. Do they finally get into the 90s 
you know, above that 90 mark, which has seemed to be the plateau since what, 2001? <laughs> had so, they had a 91 win season since then? I guess probably 2002, 2003. Yeah, yeah, they were 93 in both of those years. I don't I think they've won 91 games since 2003. Yeah. So it's an All arbitrary. Right, so- so I'm going to be honest. So I don't know if you saw, but uh, Jage ran a poll for everyone on, on Mariners Twitter. Shout out to, to the Jage page where you pick division winners, and MVPs and all that stuff. Right. And there's one for Mariners one total. I picked 86 to 89. You are such a soft little Mitch. It, it's <laughs> good one. Mitch, you're crazy. That's right. So, but you uh, know what? I think I've had a change of heart. Ooh, look at that. I bullied him into it. Take 84. <laughs> take the lower number. I've had a change of heart. They're winning 78 games. <laughs> yep, I knew it. End of episode. Uh, yeah, it. no. Uh, I'm going to take the over. So what I would say, like, in all seriousness. Like, yeah. if you were betting money, yeah. like, the 86 to 89 range, probably the safest place to put your money. Mm. Uh I think they're going to be right on some of these bets that they made this off season, yeah. like Canzone or Arias, whatever. You know, I think a couple things are going to go wrong, or they're not going to be right do. on some. That's how it. That's how it always goes. Something that you think is you know locked in right now might not be. You know, in a couple months time, whatever. But I also think that they're going to be good enough to make a significant addition at the deadline, and that's going to kind of push them over the hump for the final two months of the season. I think they will win 92 to 94 games. I think I look at this roster and I say, assuming that like nothing goes catastrophically wrong, mm. 92-ish wins feels like the the top. Uh, mm. and that's not counting if things go really well and, and you add at the deadline and blah, blah, blah. So um, I think I'd probably take the over, but I don't think they're going to, I don't think they're quite good enough to push like 95 to 100 wins. Mm. Um, but I do think that, you know, 88 to 92 seems to feel like like you know and we'll get our official predictions on how many games they win uh next week uh i guess uh, i already did (laughs) i mean kind of yeah we'll see if you change your mind again though you're kind of a flip-flopper yeah that's right kind of a let's a seesaw if you will yeah yeah call back there we go there we go on fire uh see i'll take the over uh we'll see how everything you know works out health wise and obviously there's a lot of question marks in that regard um, we'll see if you, enough guys take a step forward, but you know, I think people, a lot of people seem to forget that the Mariners won 88 games last year. Uh, with a lot, a lot of things of, went wrong with a lot of things going wrong. So yeah, I just feel like the floor is so high, uh, with the squad that they're gonna, I would bank, like if you could get 84 and a half from anybody, take it and laugh at them. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I just feel like enough things are going to go right. They're going to swing in the opposite direction this year that they're going to win, you know, 91, 92, 93 games, somewhere in that range. And then if just enough goes right and they make a big addition, they could push 95, 96. So Uh we'll see how it goes, but uh, I I would bet the over on this, but I I think 90 and a half is probably the number, maybe 89 and a half where you kind of start to go like, could go either way. Yeah. I I think with this pitching staff, and I think the offense is going to be good enough. I don't think it's going to be a great offense by any stretch of the imagination, but I think it's going to be good enough when compounded by that pitching staff, and they're going to win a lot of games. I think they're probably going to win a lot of you know one to two run games this year as well. That is going to do it for our show. Hope you guys enjoyed our over under today, and uh, hopefully you guys participated as well. Would love to see your guys' uh, answers to all these over unders down in the comments below. Before we get out of here, once again, a reminder that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on youtube and now it's also available on amazon fire tv and the free fire tv channel app locked on sports today is here for you 24 7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of locked on plus our national shows covering every league find locked on sports today now available on the free fire tv channels app and uh, again thank you so much for joining us here on the locked on mariners podcast for colby pat note i'm tiding gonzalez be sure to give us a follow on twitter at lo underscore mariners you can follow me at ty dane gonzalez and colby at c pat 11 that's cpat 11 you can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode thank you again for making us your first listen have yourself a beautiful baseball day and we'll see you next time peace